My name is Susan Karanoff. I live in Switzerland, but I was born and raised in Canada, and I left Canada at the age of, of 23. I'm now 60, and I have been living with Ressam since the age of 34. I think my Ressam story is a bit atypical in that my journey to a diagnosis was relatively short, thankfully, and it wasn't until the age of 32 when I started to develop issues with my peripheral vision. I was on vacation at the time, actually, vacationing in Ireland, and I started to get a glimmer on the periphery of my vision. And that led me to go to see the ophthalmologist. And at the same time, I had also lost my sense of smell. <clears throat> so I had gone to see the ENT specialist. And although I had told both of these specialists that I had these concomitant issues going on, neither of them really made any connection between sense of smell and the RP. When I got my RP diagnosis, the consultant nurse there gave me a pamphlet about a self-help group for people with retinal diseases by the name of Retina Swiss. I made contact with them very quickly because I wanted to find out more about the, the disease and connect with others who had been diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa. I became a member of Retina Swiss and I actually joined the, the board of directors there. I was a, a board member for 10 years. And actually, thanks to that, I got my wrestling diagnosis relatively quickly because through a chance discussion with the president of Retina Swiss, I mentioned to her that I had also lost my sense of smell. <clears throat> and she clicked immediately and she said that she's aware of a syndrome that presents with both of these conditions and that although it's a long shot, I should be tested for Repsom. So I went to the University of Zurich and they did a phytanic acid blood test. And sure enough, my levels came back elevated. They were about 190 micromoles at the time. And because the diet sheet was so limited, it took me quite a while to actually come to terms with changing my diet. Thankfully, my rectum journey has been, or let's say the progression of the disease has been relatively slow. My main problem is tunnel vision. So my vision has decreased to about 25 degrees. I was forced to give up driving in 2014. Thankfully, I live in Switzerland, which has an extremely good public transport network. I do have some loss of hearing, although I don't use hearing aids, certain voices that, that give me issues. And I do have recurring signs of neuropathy. They, they come and go. I know that despite following the diet, for some reason, I haven't been able to keep my levels under control. Five years ago, I reduced to working part time, work at an international pharmaceutical company as a global trial leader. Thankfully, my company is one of those companies very advanced with diversity and inclusion. And working part time with a disability is, is very much welcome there. You know, a lot of people have various medical diagnoses. You know, there's people who have just a hearing problem or people who just have RP or just have ataxia. But with Refsum, you know, we have it all. <laughs> the other thing that I find a bit frustrating with Refsum is that it's a deteriorating condition. So we're always getting used to a new normal. You know, and I often think with my vision, okay, I've lost so much. If it would only stay like this, I can cope. But you know, there's this nagging thought in the back of my head that says, well, maybe it's going to get worse. You know, how are you going to cope then? We don't, you know, you just do your best to cope, but it's, you know, so much going on at once that sometimes it's, it's overwhelming. But generally speaking, I don't find it difficult to comply with the diet. Having said that, there are certain things that I, I miss. I'm living in Switzerland, you know, this is the land of milk and cheese. That's, you know, one of the things that I that I really miss. Nothing tastes the same as a, a, a true, you know, sticky, gooey mozzarella cheese on, on a pizza, let's face it. You know, no alternative will be that good. You know, my symptoms are not obvious when somebody meets me initially. Because I use a cane more often, I am now telling people in advance, you know, I do have this disability. And of course, doing all this awareness work through the DARE Foundation, of course, I, I identify as a person having some and I'm more comfortable about, you know, owning it and 
and raising awareness. When I think about improving quality of life, my main wish would be, you know, to have a cure for Refsum. <laughs> and, uh, and I do believe that we will eventually have a cure. It may not be, you know, in, in my lifetime, or I may not be able to benefit from it. The research that is moving along with the support of, of DARE, I think these are exciting times. But yeah, you know, my one wish would be, you know, to be, to be healthy again. <laughs>